So one of the things that I think makes a lot of sense to mention now is that when we think about these discount rates, let's open them all back up. Let's open this back up. When we think about these discount rates, we say, what, what discount rate do we want to use for Apple? And remember, we're going to have the same model, a similar model. We're going to have a similar model for Microsoft. We're going to have a similar model for IBM. We're going to have a similar model for Facebook, for LinkedIn, for all of its other industry competitors. And we're going to have to decide on discount rates for those companies. And how do we decide who gets the low discount rate? That's, that's what you want uh, as, as a, for an investor. You want, or at least that's what would make the value of the company higher. It doesn't necessarily mean that the company is a good investment. The only time the company is a good investment is if you can buy it for less than what it's worth. We have to objectively say which company is riskiest. And one of the ways we can do that is by judging management. We can judge people in investing. In fact, it's, it's, we have to. I don't like to be judgmental in anything else, but we have, to, uh, we have to judge management. And I don't think beta or volatility or anything, those are not good ways to judge uh, management. It's intangible. It's intangible. You really have to make a gut check. So when we think about Apple's competitors or, or peers, we can think about what? Netflix, Google, Facebook, AT&T, what else? Who else? Let's see. You can say for RV and Bloomberg, we get a good guess. IBM, Samsung, Sony, those are a few to, to name to, 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 to name the least. Just big tech giants, big diversified. Apple's not that diversified, but tech giants. What are the discount rates we're going to give to all of these guys? Well, diversity is really important. You know, diversity is really important, and and the the type of business they're in. AT and T is a regulated monopoly, so it's going to have the lowest. It's going to have the lowest discount rate. Microsoft is very diversified, but it's not a monopoly that's enforced by the government. AT and T literally has a monopoly. Hewlett Packard has struggled so much. So is, so is IBM, but IBM's really diverse. Really diverse. Netflix is, is I think, probably the riskiest. Google is, is so entrenched and so seems to be not diverse, but, but they seem to be impregnable. Facebook has a short track record. I think it's pretty risky. Samsung, again, super diverse. That's kind of how I would put the discount rates. And part of that goes in the discount rates is well, how do I feel about the CEO of each company? Who do I trust? Who do I trust the most to make sure that in 2030 that this company is still generating a lot of cash flow? That in, in 2025, Tim Cook starts to think about a successor, or sooner than that, 2020. In 2022, Apple's new CEO, I can trust and believe in. Who knows? Who knows? And that's why we have to think about management. The only way we can think about management, again, you may not, you're not at uh, a company like Fidelity, where Fidelity will meet with, with Tim Cook. Fidelity will sit down with Tim Cook and grill him. They'll grill him. They'll say, let's see who else are Apple's biggest shareholders. Let's see who's Apple's biggest shareholder. Who, who decides their faith? Ken Griffin, maybe. Carl Icahn, right? Icahn is the 15th largest shareholder of Apple. And we know that Icahn calls Tim Cook all the time. Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, and there's Fidelity number four. These are passive, usually passive mutual funds. Fidelity, there's some guy sitting there saying, hmm, do I want to buy Apple or do I not want to buy Apple? And he's going to meet with Tim Cook and say, well, Tim, what are you doing about the cars? What are you doing about this? What are you doing about that? Why is iPhone sales slowing? And he's going to grill him, and he's going to do the same thing with all these other companies, and he's going to decide, well, I don't really trust the CEO of IBM. I'm going to give it a 10% discount rate. Or you know what? I really trust the Netflix CEO. I don't... I don't think I want to discount those cash flows by very much at all. And you can make these decisions as an executive. Now, again, you don't work at Fidelity, and even the people that work at Fidelity don't get to meet Tim Cook every day, or, or even once a quarter, perhaps, once a year. Um, but nevertheless, you get to listen to the conference calls. And you may not get to meet Tim Cook, but you could get to meet some of the people that work there, whether it's in the investor relations department, or perhaps uh, just reading about them is just as good. So I think that... Uh, Getting a sense of management is, is quite important. The next step is something uh, that I think is really important. I'll leave you with this. It's very, very important to read all of the press releases you can and update your model with them. The model isn't just financial. You want to be able to list things here, your notes, sort of all of your notes. iPhone, iPad, what are their other products? iTunes, 
Any other products? How about potential future products? Is iCar in the pipeline? Is video games in their pipeline? Is reality TV in their pipeline? What's going to happen? What is, what is Apple going to do? What are they going to do? Everyone watches their every move. And what's the breakdown? What's the breakdown? No, that's, that's not right, uh, Laura. It's, uh, don't, don't spread misinformation in my chat. iPod. Oh, right, they sell computers, obviously. What is that, MacBook, stuff like that? Macs? What we want to do percentage of revenue. We want to take notes in our model. So one of the ways that we can do that is going through all of the press releases. All of the press releases. And as I mentioned, we can go to their website for that. You can, in fact, click Press Releases. And here are all their press releases. And I, I expect you to go back uh, at least one year. If you want to understand a company, you have to go back at least a year reading every press release and listening to every conference call. The Form 10-Q for the first two quarters of fiscal 2015, and the Form 8-K filed with the SEC today along with the associated press release. Apple assumes no obligation to update any forward-looking statements or information which speak as of their respective dates. I'd now like to turn the call over to Tim for introductory remarks. Thanks, Nancy. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you. And if you read the press release, you can see that they're giving guidance. What's guidance? Well, Apple is telling you what they expect. They said for the second quarter, we expect revenue between 50 and 53 billion. So remember when all you guys are guessing? Well, Apple is guessing too. They said 50 to 53. And what are we putting in our model? We're putting 55. 55. Well, that's probably too ambitious. How about 54? And then they're saying gross margin will be between 39 and 39 and a half. So let's put in 39.25. And all of these will affect our numbers quite a bit. Here, we'll put it up here, 39.25. And you can see that the net income went from, uh, hang on. The net income, when we make that change, went from 12.634 to 12.328. So it went down because of, needless to say, the margins are lower. So you can sort of, you get all this information. Expenses of 6 to 6.1. What did we have? Wow, we only had 5.3. Wow, so they're really going to be spending a lot of money. 6 to 6.1. So now we're down to 11 billion in net income from 12 and a half. 